Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mountain Blade Bannerlord and we're doing another guide. This one in my series of helpful starting guides. The first one I did kind of did a high level overview of all the factions and what's going to be the strongest. And that one also went into cultures and all that sort of stuff. Then we went through the family backgrounds, which you should choose based on your playstyle. And then we went through a bunch of different skills, basically a high level overview of all the skills and attributes and focus points and all that sort of stuff. Kind of broke that down. So this one is going to be a... Uh, little bit lower level overview of the troops for each faction and this one helps you based on you know your playstyle. what do you want to play as are you going to be a uh, heavy cavalry only do you want to have balanced troops do you want to run in a roman style heavy infantry legions like this one's going to help break down i'm gonna go through pros and cons of each military for each faction so there are six different factions in Mountain Blade Bandalord, each one with their own strengths and weaknesses. So I'm going to use this guide as an in-depth look at Vlandia, Batania, the Empire, Sturgia, the Kuzates, and the Azurai. And we're going to go through all their units and the strengths and weaknesses, or at least all their units worth mentioning. So without any further ado, let's dive on in and start off with Vlandia. So Vlandia is definitely a good faction uh, for you to choose if you want to put an emphasis on polearm infantry and heavy cavalry. So they've definitely got that, the strong cavalry and also interestingly strong anti-cavalry units. So they're very good for, uh, for charging and defending weaker infantry and archer units. So let's start off by taking a look at the pros for this faction. So, Vlandia has some of the best crossbowmen in the game, and they get Pavis shields after rank 3. And so Pavis shields are some of the largest shields in the game, and also very, very durable, allowing them to deal with incoming damage. So, I've seen these shields withstand cavalry charges. Definitely, they can take on a lot of damage from infantry units, and for sure, they block a lot of projectiles. So, they're very, very good shields. Uh, Vlandia also has good polearm infantry with the Volgir and pikemen, as opposed to several of the other factions. Uh, the Vlandian sergeant also utilizes polearms and maces, so they're they're pretty strong as far as infantry goes. Vlandia also gets access to heavy cavalry along with their special cavalry called the Vlandian squire that progresses down to the Vlandian banner knight. Uh, these are perhaps the best cavalry in the game. In my opinion, they beat out the Imperial Cataphracts because they couch their lances, so they're slightly more effective in a charge. Uh, however, their armor is slightly inferior to the Cataphracts. Uh, but in any case, that is still a huge plus for this faction. Uh, unfortunately, Vlandia does have a few cons to their military, so they are limited in heavy troops. Heavy infantry only gets decent around level 5, and even then, they're not as good as they could be because they don't have shields. Generally speaking, they have medium armor just around the board in Vlandia, which makes sense for a military, uh, I mean, a uh, mercenary feudal society like this, instead of having a large standing army like the Empire would have. So they would have more put into heavy armor. They don't have that, so it is a lighter armor than most places. And unfortunately, they also really don't have a whole lot of access to bows except for specialist lines. Uh, and they have no access to horse, horse archers. So for the Vlandians, your option is basically just crossbowmen and uh, no skirmishers. So that's definitely their biggest weakness. Next up, we have Sturgia. And so for the Sturgians, they are uh, based on mostly a Kievan Rus sort of background. Uh, which is kind of like a mix between a lot of your Eastern European, Russian, and uh, Viking style of military. So they focus a lot more on infantry than cavalry, and this means they have a heavy focus on sword and shield infantry. Shield walls, primarily. Uh, and so you're going to use a shield wall a lot in this with this faction in battles, or at least you should if you want to utilize them effect effectively. Sturgeons have arguably the best infantry in the game just on the whole, even though they don't have the best units, they have the best overall infantry. So let's take a look at uh, what they're good at. They have a heavy focus on sword and shield infantry, and they have very strong defense with a shield wall, and they're very large circular shields. Overall, all of their infantry units are pretty strong. They also have strong range units with archers and throwing units, which can do a lot of damage while the infantry holds the line. Uh, they have a specialist berserker line and a good amount of heavy infantry with the Sturgeon veteran warriors, which are some of the best uh, infantry in the game. And they also they work rather well if you complement uh, Vlandian or Imperial cavalry because they don't have great cavalry. But uh, they have much better infantry on the whole than either of those other factions, which do have the great heavy cavalry. So if you're mixing troops between factions, that's kind of a good mix. Or if you're allying with them, so let's say you're playing as a Sturgeon and you're allied with Vlandians or something like that. If they're using the cavalry, your infantry is going to be a very, very good uh, 
supplement to their army. They do have some downsides, so they have limited access to cavalry, which I mentioned, and that's probably their weakest point. Every other faction has a royal line, but Sturgia only has access to heavy cavalry through a specialist line, so they're, they do have the Druznik champions, but they're harder to get. You're not going to get many of them in the game, basically. Uh, overall, they are a lighter armored faction, and they heavily rely on their shields until around tier 5, so they do have those great big heavy durable round shields which cover basically their whole body, but that's primar primarily because the rest of their armor is pretty light and weak, so they need that shield, otherwise they're going to you know, get turned into arrow fodder. Uh, and they also have multiple specialist lines, which makes it pretty difficult to recruit specific soldiers. So if you're playing a Sturgia, there's going to be good troops all the way around. You're going to find them when you're going through any of these lines. But if you're someone that likes to build up like one specific type of troop or just have all of them, that, that's not going to be as easily. You're going to have a mixed bag because of all the different specialist lines. Next, we can talk about the Kuzates. So the Kuzate faction, uh, their units are mostly Mongolian influenced. Uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, people of the steppe influences in there. I see a lot of Cuman influences in there. Uh, kip check sort of stuff so they definitely excel at horse archer units with a fully dedicated branch of units called uh, nomads and this is not actually an easy faction to play as because it requires a lot of mobility and it, uh, it's not it doesn't fit most people's play styles they they are very very strong and good but it's it's relatively easy to lose with this faction if you don't know how to effectively use them so let's go through some of their strengths quick uh, they have strong shot cavalry right after tier 3 in the Nomad unit branch, uh, which is going to put you at tier 3. That's going to be better than any other tier 3 cavalry troops in the game, pretty much. Uh, they also double pretty well for melee damage and uh, will handle themselves relatively well on foot. Uh, out of all the factions, this faction does have the quickest access to cavalry and great cavalry. It, it beats all the other games, so if, you're, if you want to go for cavalry and you want to do that nice and early with relatively large numbers and decent success rates, uh, the Kuzates are going to give you that quickest access. Uh, they're very mobile and hard-hitting, uh, so their armies are capable of outpacing most other armies due to their diverse cavalry and, of course, their map speed movement bonus. So if you're looking for that style of slash and run and skirmishing type of combat, this is definitely the best faction. Uh, they do have some downsides. They have very limited infantry forces and, of course, no crossbowmen. Uh, the infantry units they do have are pretty good, like the Kuzate Darkhan, but it's pretty limited. There's not a lot of options there. Um, and most all of their infantry units are spearmen, so they're not very good when trying to take castles in a siege. The pole arms just aren't as good for that. Uh, they don't have any dedicated shock infantry or sword and, uh, sword and shield infantry, so when fighting in terrain that makes cavalry combat very difficult, uh, they can suffer severely, so you definitely want to control the environment with these guys, which, you know, you can if you're careful with it, because you do have faster movement speed than most places. But uh, you don't want to get caught in a shield wall combat, because you'll get destroyed with these guys. Uh, the Kuzates don't fare well against full-on infantry armies, so if you've got uh, heavy Imperial infantry army or Sturgeon shield walls or anything like that, or even playing against the Vlandians with their anti-cavalry spearmen, you're going to want to be careful with the Kuzates and stay far away and shoot arrows at them until you've killed them or demoralized them or something. So definitely some serious weaknesses for the Kuzates. They're one of those factions that uh, their, their weaknesses can really outpace their strengths if you're not careful. Next up, of course, we have the Empire. So the Empire is a very well-rounded faction, so that makes it one of the easiest factions to play as. Uh, you normally get dropped into Empire territories when starting the game, so it's definitely a good place to start. They have strong diverse infantry with very, very strong heavy armor and a nice balance between one-handed and two-handed troops. So uh, let's go through some of their stuff. Uh, again, like I said, well-armored. That's going to be consistent across all their stuff, but they have well-armored archer units, so they have both an option for crossbowmen and traditional archers, both of those trees ending in the, respectively, in the uh, Imperial Sergeant Crossbow or the Imperial Palatine Guard, which are going to be some of the best archers in the game. Only downside with the Palatine Guard, as people will likely point out, is they don't have a shield, but given the fact that they're archers and they're going to be shooting a bow most of the time, that makes sense. Uh, their Imperial Sergeant Crossbowmen are very good. They're comparable to the Vlandian Sharpshooters, except they've got better armor. Uh, they have very... Overall, their fighting force is very strong and diverse. There's going to be a lot of options. All of them are going to be pretty durable, given their high... Uh, very comprehensive heavy armor. 
Uh, their elite cataphracts are super deadly on their charge. One of the best Lancer units in the game. Only downside to them is that they have low maneuverability, so they... If you charge through and cut through lines and are able to reform and charge again, they're going to be very, very deadly. But you don't want to let them get bogged down because they're going to get stuck there and they're just going to get killed. So, generally speaking, like I said, it is an easy faction to play as. Possibly the easiest. Uh, they do have a few weak points. So, they have limited access to horse, horse archers. Uh, they really only have one option there, which is the Imperial Bucillari. Which, originally, were very, very good. Probably the best horse, horse archers in the game. But, early on, that was patched and they got nerfed. So, they're not nearly as good. Uh, they also have a very limited specialist javelin line. And no access to a dedicated pole, uh, pole arm infantry. So, uh, that can be rough. They're, uh, they do have... Decent polearm infantry in the Manavliaton units. Very heavy armor, uh, armor, very good stats. They're pretty effective. Only problem with them is they don't have shields. So they're very good in some circumstances, but very bad in others. Anywhere where they can get shot full of arrows, they're going to. So yeah, that's the Empire. So next up we have Batania. And uh, if I was going to describe any faction and their troops as a glass cannon... Uh, it would definitely be B Batania, because they definitely have got some strengths, but boy are they easy to exploit. So, a few of their perks, they have a lot of skilled infantry types, and they're lightly armored, and they tend to utilize javelins. So these types of uh, troops do a lot of damage to armored units, because a javelin is going to be much more effective against heavily armored units than a uh, bow or even a crossbow. Uh, so these can be very good, but again, they're very lightly armored, so these ones are ones that you're going to want to keep out of reach of infantry who will tear through them. That being said, if you have a defensive position with these ones, especially in large numbers, it's very easy to entirely wipe out enemy armies as they try to attack you, because they're just going to throw volley after volley of those javelins. Uh, they have powerful and cheap shock troops uh, in their folksmen and raiders. These are going to be pretty dang strong as far as infantry goes, at least up until tier 3, tier 4 for the rest of the game. Uh, and they, they're very cheap and fast to train. Their wildlings are very powerful and about as heavily armored as wildling or, or as battalion troops go. So they work very well for shock infantry troops. These are going to be good for breaching walls, you know, going through and, and taking out people in the shield wall, all that sort of stuff. Uh, their bata uh, battalion highborn youth line of archers are very strong. They're the strongest in the game. Their Fians uh, are going to be some of the best archers that you will ever find in the game, and their champions, their, their highest level Fians, are the best archers in the game. They just absolutely dominate whenever archers are an applicable troop. Uh, they do have some weak points. Overall, their melee and skirmish cavalry units are very weak, and they require advanced use of tactics to win battles if you're going to try and using you know, those troop types, so not great there. Uh, they're generally a very lightly armored faction. There's a few exceptions to that, but on the whole, they're not going to have a lot of great archer. I mean, a lot of great armor. And they also have little to no access to horse archers. So while they do have the best archers in the game, they don't have any mounted skirmishers, so that mobility is very limited. Lastly, of course, we have the Azerai. And so the Azerai are perhaps the most challenging out of all factions to play as, at least from a military standpoint, because this faction relies purely on mobility rather than armor. Their good armor doesn't really show up until tier 4 or 5 for most of their troops. Uh, the Azerai likely has a higher skill cap, so if you can master them, you will be able to defeat basically any force in the game. Their main strengths are that they have great mobility with a widely diverse troop choice and multiple recruitment lines, so there's going to be a lot of different options here, but uh, basically the best way to try and win with the Azerai is definitely going to be going for that high mobility. Their Mamluks uh, provide a nice diversity of ranged heavy cavalry and combat cavalry, as well as two-handed shock troops. So the Mamluks are definitely definitely going to be good in a lot of circumstances and, and should make up the bulk of an Azerai army if you want it to be effective. Uh, the Azerai specialize in extensive cavalry and also have solid archer units in addition to the Mamluk. So definitely some strengths there if you're if you're really going to go for that skirmisher archer kind of hit and run running all the way very similar to the kuzates except for their armor is not nearly as good as the kuzates so as far as a couple other cons go like i said armor is going to be the main one they really really don't have a whole lot of armor at all until tier four or five and 
at that point it's really just medium armor which is not going to be the best it's going to be outclassed by basically every other faction in the game even the Batanians who have pretty light armor uh two specialist lines they have and they don't necessarily do much so they're not great so i, ge I generally avoid them and uh their cavalry is exclusively ranged uh, they really don't have any melee cavalry, and or at least any good options for it, and the one they do have is medium armor at best, so in a charge, especially cavalry on cavalry, or cavalry on anti-cavalry, or cavalry trying to take out uh, a defended archer position or something like that, that's not going to be a good call, they're going to get killed in there. So... Definitely pros and cons. Like I said, this one's probably it takes the highest skill to be very good with the Azurai But uh, if you know how to do it, you can do it. So kind of a summary Mountain Blade Bannerlord all of their factions. They definitely cater to different play styles So there really is no best faction for every person and most of it is definitely gonna come down to how you like to play the game Flandia is a faction with strong infantry and heavy cavalry. Batania is, like I said, a glass cannon, so their playstyle is going to play like that. You're going to have heavy damage output, but light armor. So as long as you can stay out of reach of your enemy, they're going to be good for that. But other than that, they're, you're going to get wiped out. Sturgia overall has the best infantry in the game, but they severely lack in cavalry. The Empire is definitely the most well-rounded faction. They've got strong infantry, uh, really nice archers very strong cavalry, you know, of course, like I mentioned, a few caveats that they do have some weaknesses. Uh, the Azurai have a very diverse and mobile faction, uh, but again, it's going to have that high skill cap there. You're going to need to know how to do it. You're going to need to control your troops. You can't just charge in and hope to win, uh, at least not unless you severely outnumber your enemy. Lastly, if we're talking about the Kuzates, they have, like I said, you got to have that hit and run play style. They're going to utilize that shot cavalry and infantry to go in and out of battle. You're going to need to dive in and out, reform, be able to control those formations. Because if you don't, again, you're going to get bogged down by the more infantry specific factions who will defeat you. So that does it for our troop video today. I hope this kind of helped as more, like I said, this is a little bit lower, but still a pretty high level. I didn't want to go into just the stats. I've done top five troop types for each faction and the best troops, all that sort of stuff. I've done those videos. So if you really want to get into the meat of it like that and just break them down skill point to skill point, uh, that's the way to go. But this one gives you kind of an overview of the factions as a whole. So if you want to go for, you know, if you know that you just want to do infantry, uh, while the Empire is definitely a good faction because they've got in good infantry, Sturgia has arguably the best infantry in the game. If you want to do that glass cannon style playthrough where you're going to be like, okay, we're going to do quick hits, we're going to do a ton of damage, then we're going to get the hell out of there, then the Batanians are for you. There's a play style out there for everyone. So I hope this video was useful and enjoyable. Uh, but in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.